Greetings, good storytellers. I am the artful narrator, and it is 8 o'clock in the morning. I haven't slept yet, and I also haven't shaved in a few days. Sounds like the perfect environment to make a trope video. Although this not being shaved thing is bothering me. Ah, oh, I know. I'll put it under my hat. That'll fix it. So, as I was saying, today's video is about character faults and foibles, which is a very fun word to say, but is not something that is going to help this video in the search results, I would assume, because I doubt very many people know what it is, being as it is a fencing term. But uh, there, that's what it means. Now you know. So, as I was saying, when we create characters, we desire to build them in such a way that they have a certain perfection to them. But in reality, when we are creating these individuals, we are not actually aiming for true perfection, but rather for a standard of quality. And an important part of this quality is that the characters should be nuanced and textured. And a big factor in that is incorporating flaws. But there are many ways in which flaws and weaknesses can be woven into a character to change both the narrative and the mm, spirit of the individual that embodies this vulnerability eh? or mm, unfortunate quirk. Now, when you think of weaknesses, you oftentimes would think of something along the lines of Superman's kryptonite or Achilles' heel. But weaknesses and flaws can actually be a source of strength for characters and act as double-edged blades. For example, consider Darkwing Duck, the titular protagonist from a wonderful 90s TV series and one of my all-time favorite programs. In it, Drake Mallard puts on a purple mask, wide-brimmed hat and cape, and goes out into the streets of St. Canard, fighting evil as Darkwing Duck, the terror that flaps in the night. Now, in this show, he is well-established as having a completely ridiculously huge ego, to the extent that it is a well-known vulnerability that his enemies exploit to try to bring him down. <laughs> Your ego is out of control, isn't it? What? And yet, while this is certainly a failing, it is also a strength. For if he did not have this massive ego, if he did not have this inflated view of himself, this confidence in himself, he would hardly be able to go out and fight crime. No, he would be far more sensible and would just stay at home. This is bogus! You can't quit the crime fighting business! Ah, Dr. Loon's tests prove it. As a superhero, I'm a super zero. The world has seen the last of Darkwing Duck. But instead, he leaps into action with Launchpad and Goslin at his side, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bushroot and Megavolt and all the wonderful rogues gallery of villains that plague the city of St. Canard. As I said, his weakness, his flaw, is a double-edged blade, something that can be used against him, but something that is crucial to his character, a true component of who he is, and vital to his status as a hero. That's right! Darkwing Duck is back! Of course, not all faults and foibles have beneficial aspects to them, and some, in fact, must be overcome if the protagonist is to reach that next important level, or to manifest their true potential. And, in this vein, our next example comes from the superb anime Hunter x Hunter, or Hunter Hunter, if you're not pronouncing the title the way that it's spelled. In this series, Killua, the son of a family of elite assassins, is shown to us as an overall cool-headed, competent, and eminent badass. However, it is revealed that during his assassin training with his brother, his brother ingrained a conditioned response in him, causing him to be gripped by fear if 
presented with an opponent who is sufficiently strong enough to the point where victory is no longer an absolute certainty. In these situations, Killua is either forced to flee or becomes trapped in his, his blah, becomes trapped where he stands as he wrestles with this conditioning, trying to free himself from this fear. Now, appropriately enough, this is a conflict that is not quickly resolved, but something which lingers over him throughout the course of most of the series, and which it is shown multiple times is something which Killua must overcome if he is to be able to manifest his true potential and truly be a help to Gon in the to be a help to Gon in his many adventures. However, things finally come to a head in the Chimera Ant arc, when Killua comes face to face with Ramat and realizes that if he is to help protect Gon, he will have to defeat this seemingly superior opponent. And even though that conditioning is triggered and he finds himself once more trapped, unable to move forward, and unwilling to retreat, he finally finds that spark within himself and understands the source of this block, like the key to undoing this conditioning. And then, with a simple gesture, he tears out the block and frees himself from this ingrained and uh, response of his brother. Now, how exactly he does this is something which should be experienced rather than spoiled, so I will not go into detail with it here. However, I will say that now fully manifesting his true potential, and with fear safely pushed aside, Kilwa's fight with Ramat is as spectacular as it is short. <coughs> Now, our third example for this video was deceptively difficult to pick. As you can plainly see, this section of the video was actually recorded about a week and a shave later than the rest of the episode. And while this example of this type of foible is not particularly rare, it is very personal to me, and so it was important that I select an example that embodies both the beauty and the tragedy inherent in this iteration of an affliction. For not all afflictions have a duality to them, or at least a clear duality, offering both strength and weakness. And not all afflictions can be necessarily overcome, at least not without an exceeding level of difficulty. Because there are some afflictions that are so closely tied to who we are that is not a matter of putting something behind us, but a matter of coming to terms with the reality that there is this undesired part of ourselves, this weakness, this sickness. And I suppose in that regard, there is still hints of these other versions of this trope. For if we can come to terms with this, if we can learn to embrace this seemingly more ugly part of ourselves, then we can become the stronger for it. And while we do not put it behind us forever, we can overcome the shame that it induces, the anxiety that it creates. But regardless of those other facets, I will now present to you the example that I chose. One that, as I said, is not fitting perfectly in the representation of the specific struggles that this character endures, but rather it is the beauty and the glory with which she overcomes it, and the touching elegance of the song that she sings, which I feel more than embody. 
this desired aspect of character faults and foibles. I will now read to you the prepared little bit that I wrote up for this because I wanted to be sure that my words conveyed the passion that I feel for this and the joy that it induces in me, even though it reminds me of the pain as well. In The Greatest Showman, Kayala Settle plays Letty Lutz, a woman viewed as strange and freakish just because she is able to grow facial hair. However, throughout the course of the movie, she finds the courage to no longer be ashamed of her scars, and rather than letting her uniqueness isolate her just because others do not understand her and choose to belittle her, she embraces her own glory and connects with other damaged people. A tear-inducing example of how, even though many of us have been left damaged by a medical condition or by psychological scars, it is the manner in which we endeavor to rise above said afflictions that profoundly affects our stories, reminding us that we are so much more than our afflictions. This is brave, this is bruised, this is who I'm meant to be, this is me. So there you have it. Three examples of varying faults and foibles, afflictions and weaknesses. Some more openly triumphant than others, and some more tragic but no less noble. And it is my hope that through showing these to you, you may find some cause to include something of this sort in one of your stories, or feel vindicated if you already have. For while I do not advocate for stories to be sadder or darker, I do wish to add this element of texture, this beautiful facet of reality. Because as artists, we can desire to make things too perfect, to make things too ideal. But through depicting stories with characters that struggle with these same problems, we can grow to relate to them on a much more profound level than we otherwise might have. And through seeing their stories of heroism and triumph, overcoming both obstacles infinitely more fantastic than our everyday lives, and surprisingly just as painful and personal, we can begin to see our stories in a different light and appreciate the heroism within ourselves and understand that perfection is not some thing that exists in the world with abundance. It is, in fact, exceedingly and surprisingly rare, especially when it comes to human beings. And that while some of us may look at ourselves and consider ourselves broken in some regard, to be broken is not something strange and ugly. To be broken is to be human, to be fallible. It's just another word for being nuanced and having things that we perhaps wish we were not burdened with, but which are no less important in rounding out our characters and completing the tapestry of our lives, giving different texture and significance to our struggles, our passions, and the courage with which we live our lives. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that my videos are and continue to be either informative or perhaps 
also a pleasant diversion. Until next time. Yeah, this is my third time recording this last bit, and somehow I managed to forget my hat. Oh well. <laughs>